our toxic smelter town. What price must some humans pay in order to advance technology and build our society? Some must pay with their lives. Over the years, countless multitudes of people have died as a direct result of the labor involved in mankind's efforts to furnish what we all want or need. Some unfortunates have died as victims of the second-hand effects of all the hard work. Hello, this is Isaiah Montoya, local magazine and newspaper reporter. I started a collaboration with videographer Jose Luis Rubio because I really love his stylistic approach. Additionally, we both share the same vision of unveiling El Paso's history to the present day audience. We decided upon Smelter Town, USA, a town that once existed but no longer does, although remnants of it do remain. We want to take a trip back and find out the story of what occurred there so we could see how it relates today and how it enhances us in El Paso. Previously a self-sustaining corporate community, Smelter Town existed as a direct result of an Asarco copper and lead smelter and later ceased to exist as a direct result of the same smelter. Humanity inadvertently poisoning itself in order to advance. Yes, it happens here on the border. In fact, the poor working class often suffer the most. Since we're here, let us get a vibe and a feeling of what smelter town might have been like. Breathe in the air. Well, not too hard. I mean, I'm still kind of wary of the whole toxic thing. This is San Marcos Drive, La Calavera, also known as The Skull in English. This neighborhood has been around since before Smelter Town existed, but they were neighbors, although separated by these desert hills here. Because of their geographic position, they didn't receive as much toxicity from Asarco as Smelter Town did. And unlike Smelter Town, it still exists today. This neighborhood is resilient despite the rugged surroundings, and we want to see exactly why this neighborhood has lasted. Even though they used to share the stores of Smelter Town, they'd shop in Smelter Town, go to school in Smelter Town, but they also heard the stories of the Smelter Towners. This neighborhood still exists. It's a remnant of an era gone by. Asarco is the American smelting and refining company, and as early as 1910, refined hundreds of thousands of tons of lead and copper, which was taken from its mines in Mexico. A large amount of the workers for Asarco at Smelter Town also came from Mexico. They established a home here in what is now El Paso. The residents of Smelter Town were also largely responsible for erecting the giant white cross of Christ upon Mount Cristo Rey. As you can see, the border wall behind us indicates that this is the dividing of two countries. But back 120 years ago, the majority of the residents of Smelter Town were actually immigrants from Mexico who came to work at Asarco. And that's exactly how Smelter Town started over 120 years ago. A large corporation making money off the land. Instead of sand and dirt, a quaint barbershop, a community hospital, buzzing bars, a busy school, and a bustling local market. And behind it all, a giant smokestack of a smelter blowing out toxic fumes in order to furnish modern society with the copper and lead it needs to be bigger, grander, better, and richer. The smelter cemetery is still around, but not in great shape. Many former residents of Smelter Town still live elsewhere, some with illnesses and debilitations which may or may not have come from lead or arsenic poisoning. Seeing the Smelter Cemetery today indicates that those that went before left a legacy and a remnant, albeit a vague one. I interviewed an 85-year-old man who lived in Smelter Town for the first 22 years of his life. His father was a master electrician for Asarco for 35 years. His vivid recollections of life there indicate that although the townsfolk knew of toxicity, the majority of them attempted to enjoy themselves thoroughly. 
His desire to remain nameless shows that he knows of the controversy surrounding Asarco and that its repercussions still reverberate today. During 1973, Smeltertown was demolished. The village had once boasted between 2,500 and 4,000 people, including a few Anglos and many Hispanics. The Center for Disease Control finally came to the conclusion that the smelting was causing a toxicity in the immediate environment. Many of the residents had extremely high lead levels in their system. Some died. Asarco representatives initially denied it, but eventually acquiesced. Smeltertown had, by then, actually been annexed as part of El Paso, and local politics were intertwined with the Asarco reality. Some believe egregious politics had some pull in the final decision. Nevertheless, Asarco itself stayed functioning until 2013, when it was obliterated. In reality, this bleak and dreary landscape isn't solely the result of a toxic smelter. The general El Paso del Norte region has always been arid, hot, and severe. It is late March and I'm burning up out here. The fact that this area was able to be used for valuable purposes is a testament to human will and ingenuity. Yes, the human mind is complex and innovative, but the human body can be fragile and delicate, especially under the impact of foreign elements. Without water and shelter, one may easily die in the Chihuahuan Desert. The possibility of early death is manifold here when alloyed with the burn-off of precious metals. Some took the risk of trying to make it in this desert. Some willingly took the risk of living and working at Smeltertown. And some paid the ultimate price. This is spooky. The Smeltertown Cemetery. This is where the ghosts live of a ghost town. Double spooky. No one wants to come to a cemetery, especially if you're the one who's six feet under. But it's not like the people of Smelter Town didn't live full lives. They were lively children, young adults. They got married, fell in love, had children, lived lives full of fun and parties. And yet, as you can see, it's desolate today. This place has been run down, forgotten, left behind. Kind of like a, a lot of the immigrants who worked in this area many years before. It's the fate that many of them faced. This story may seem foreign to you, like an unrelatable tale of yesteryear, but I urge you to ponder and possibly realize that we are all in the same conundrum. The people of Smeltertown were just like us. The reality is that the vast majority of the former residents of this current wasteland did not die from lead or arsenic poisoning. Many lived full lives and ultimately perished. From dust they came and to dust they returned. Same as us. In this way we see that the former El Pasoans parallel us today. They were building blocks which helped form the city's unique heritage. The elements seen here today do not truly possess the spirit of what was once here, but the stark emptiness of it does serve as a chilling reminder that things that pass away will only be remembered if we strive to remember them. Smeltertown was demolished in 1973 due to the toxicity that its own creators unleashed. Lessons from the past will be forgotten unless we make an effort to learn from them. Contemplate such things and attempt to comprehend them as you go about your business in your busyness. By doing so, you just might tap into a place within the recesses of your being, wherein lies deeper appreciation of the past. This is Smeltertown. Well, this was Smeltertown. From the late 1800s to 1973, a town existed here. 
It was the creation and offshoot of a company called Asarco. Just picture it. Instead of sand and dirt and rocks, a lively community. Barber shops, hospitals, stores, schools. People lived here for many years and they loved it. But behind it all, picture a giant smokestack, a big smelter, which was actually killing its own citizens, the people of Smeltertown. Today, in a small nook on El Paso's west side, the reminders of a once bustling town still eerily exist. But it is necessary to be still and breathe in the atmosphere that was once deathly toxic. One must reminisce regarding such ghastly realities to truly comprehend what occurred. Mount Cristo Rey, Mountain Christ the King. This 29-foot statue on top of this mountain was erected mostly by the residents of Smeltertown. Originally in the 1930s, the land was bought by the El Paso Diocese of the Catholic Church. Father Lourdes Acosta from San Jose Catholic Church in Smeltertown had the idea to build a 29-foot cross on top of this mountain. Indicates that the Smeltertown residents were so faithful to their Lord, even though they lived in the dire conditions of the toxicity that Asarco put forth. These residents were responsible for putting the 29-foot cross up there that is now a beacon of hope for two countries and three states. Mexico, the United States, New Mexico, Texas, and Chihuahua. As you can see behind me, the border wall goes right up the side of the mountain. It's so interesting because the residents of Smeltertown at the vocational school put up a temporary 12-foot cross up on the mountain before Father Lourdes Acosta was able to commission a Spanish sculptor, Urbisi Soler, which was his complete work in 1940. This mountain here shows the resilience of a people who knew that they were suffering from arsenic and lead poisoning, and yet they chose to continue on in their faith. Next time you walk up that two mile path going up to the top, remember that it took Smelter Town residents five years to build that little road to get up there so they could praise their father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Due to what Smelter Town residents taught the world, many lives henceforth have been saved and standards for smelting and refining have drastically improved. Some residents gave their lives and some were relocated and compensated. Some are amongst us, like my interviewee, and although they remember life at Smeltertown fondly, they also hold certain things in reserve. Lifelong impressions occurred. As El Pasoans speed through Loop 375 at Executive Center, did they realize the price which their convenience cost? Here's to you, Smeltertown. We won't forget. <laughs>